Welcome. I'm Jonathan Leonard and this is the first of a series of videos on the brain and dreams. Let's start by asking why we dream. We appear to dream because dreams play a key role in the memory processing of sleep. We know that the brain is very active during sleep. Even in the deepest sleep stages, by most measures, the brain is something like 80% as active as it is when we are awake. And we have growing evidence that during all of its various sleep stages, the brain is intensely engaged in memory processing. Memory processing dedicated to improving the content of the mind and thereby improving our ability to operate when we're awake. We also know that dreams are not just occasional events because we dream a lot. Say you awaken someone in a sleep lab during REM sleep, the sleep stage that hosts our most bizarre and dramatic dreams, and ask for a dream report. In that case, you will get a report of an active, visually detailed dream with bizarre mental content about 80% of the time. And since we typically have five or six REM periods each night, and since REM typically accounts for about 20% of all our sleep, we can see that the dreams of REM sleep alone, even without considering dreams and dreamlike events in other sleep stages, are very common. So it looks as though dreams are plenty common enough to be important, and that they likely play a significant role in the memory processing of sleep. Of course, nearly all these dreams are forgotten. If we're not awakened and asked for a report, we may remember none. Or we may have an often hazy recollection of the last dream, the one in progress when we awoke, that soon evaporates. The degree of recollection varies from night to night and person to person. Some people remember their last dream well, while others remember little or nothing to a point where they say that they don't dream. We should also note that most people can improve their recall of this last dream strongly by telling themselves they really want to remember their dreams and then putting a pad of paper and a pencil by their bedside so that they can write down what they recall when they awaken. But none of this changes the basic fact that we dream through the whole night and that nearly all these dreams are utterly forgotten. Why should we forget these dreams? Here's one theory that seems reasonable. There's now strong evidence that sleep is dedicated to improving the mind by rearranging neural memory. It's a bit like rearranging the office files. Now, if one is going to rearrange the office files, it's best to do so while the files are not in use, because then one can temporarily break normal rules by doing things like ignoring alphabetical order or by removing lots of files at one time in order to favor this rearrangement process. So with sleep being dedicated to rearranging and improving memory, there's reason to suppose that sleep conditions favoring the rearrangement process might be less than ideal for memorizing and recalling dreams. If we look at how brain structures and brain chemistry operate in sleep, we can find support for this theory. In general, brain chemistry and brain structures are working differently in each of our sleep stages than they are when we're awake. For instance, look at the hippocampal system responsible for setting up consciously recallable memories when we're awake. In sleep, it doesn't look as though it's doing its daytime job. More specifically, in slow-wave sleep, this hippocampal system is bombarded by powerful rhythmic neural discharges that seem dedicated to intensifying or shifting already established memories at a time when the mechanisms of consciousness are barely working. And in REM sleep, the picture changes again, with some hippocampal memory connections being strengthened, while others are weakened or erased. So it seems clear that this key structure associated with conscious memory establishment and recall in the waking state operates very differently in sleep than it does when we're awake. Thus, these inner workings of the brain suggest one reason why we forget dreams, but there may be other reasons. Among other things, forgetting dreams might help us to survive. That is, 
If we recalled our dreams and remembered them really well, we might confuse them with reality. So we might become chronically deluded, as deluded as some neighborhood cat that dreams the cat-killing dog next door has died and so goes sauntering into the dog's yard. For such reasons, according to this theory, natural selection has discriminated against development of really good dream recall mechanisms, leaving us with dream recall abilities too weak to do us serious harm. Now, going beyond dream recall and probing deeper into the relationship between dreams and memory, it's worth noting that this relationship between dreams and memory is quirky. Some dreams can call up recent memories in seemingly accurate and even horrifying detail. The dreams of post-traumatic stress disorder can do that but most dreams don't. Most dreams that we recall have a creative side, stand on their own rather than being mere copies of something else, and come across as mostly visual episodes drawn not from one memory, but from a multitude of memories. They can and often do reflect our concerns, but their sounds and scenes do not accurately depict real episodes from the dreamer's recent past. The dreamer can accurately recall many such recent episodes when awake. But in dreamland, as a general rule, these episodes are gone, replaced by scenes we have never experienced. This lack of episodic memories in dreams is a great mystery that brain science has now started to unravel. One key discovery is that amnesics, people who cannot form new episodic memories, can dream about recent events, even though they cannot recall those events when awake. In one famous experiment, amnesics trained to play the computer game Tetris, a game of descending shapes, were awakened in a sleep lab, and they reported dreaming of descending shapes, even though they could recall none of the Tetris training sessions. So clearly, they were dreaming of memories that could not be consciously recalled. How are these memories formed in the first place? Well, presumably they were formed within the brain in the normal course of handling sensory information. We know that amnesiacs can learn how to play ping pong, even though they cannot recall any of the training sessions. So presumably, they could learn how to play Tetris the same way. Recall from our videos on memory that our system of consciously recallable memories, established by way of the hippocampus, is only part of a much larger system that might reasonably be called the brain's memory. When you see a robin, for example, you aren't consciously recalling anything. Instead, you are using a well-established set of neural pathways to view a robin. So clearly, the brain contains a vast store of memory that is far broader than our consciously recallable declarative memory. So here is an important distinction between our consciously recallable hippocampus-related memory on the one hand and the far larger brain's memory on the other. What all of this implies is that you don't need the hippocampal system to dream any more than you need it to view a robin. That would explain why amnesics can dream of, dream of events they cannot consciously recall. It would also explain why our episodic memories of recent events generally don't show up in dreams, because the hippocampal system is not usually available for such recall, and our dreams are tapping into the much broader dream, brain's memory that is organized differently from the hippocampal pathways tied to episodic memories. Here, finally, is a sensible answer to the deepest mystery of dreams. Why certain dreams seem creative, or divine, or even prophetic. For the brain is working up new information as we sleep, information that was not necessarily available to the conscious mind when we were last awake. And it seems perfectly reasonable to think that some of the novel results of this integration and consolidation should appear to us in our dreams, not merely as a freshet of bright new ideas the next morning,
but his creative dream ideas, mystical dream direction, or seemingly prophetic dream guidance that we lacked before we went to bed.